Hello, welcome to our channel. Today, we will be presenting That Time You Killed Me, an abstract grid movement game designed by Peter C. Hayward and illustrated by Joe Rose. It was first published by Pandasaurus Games in 2021. The goal of the game is to eliminate your opponent from at least two eras on the timeline, represented by three boards in the game. It is a two-player game, suitable for anyone over 10, and has a length of 15 to 30 minutes. Let's see what that time you killed me is about. <laughs> Let's begin with the game preparation. Each player chooses a color, either white or black, and takes the seven pawns in their color. They will also get a focus token in the corresponding color. The first player is chosen randomly. Arrange the past, present, and future era boards creating a row between the two players. Make sure all boards are oriented the same way. That is, showing the number one in the same corner on all of them. The white player must place a white pawn on space number one of each board. The black player will do the same, but using black pawns instead and placing them on space number 16 of the three boards. The remaining four pawns are the player's personal supply. If you want to adjust the level of difficulty, you can always reduce the number of pawns in your supply. The first player, in this example white, must place their focus token on their side of the past era board. The second player, on the other hand, must place theirs on their side of the future era board. Now let's have a look at how to play the game. Starting with the first player, both players will take turns until one of them wins the game. On your turn, you must perform the following steps in order. During the first step of your turn, choose one of your own copies to take actions. Make sure it's in the era where your focus token is currently located, since it is not possible to use pawns from the other boards. If, at the beginning of your turn, your focus token is in an era where you have no pawns, you will lose your actions. Immediately shift your focus token to a different board and end your turn. The same thing will happen if you do have pawns, but you can't take any actions with them. During the second step, you have to perform two of the following actions. You can take the same action twice, but remember that you must always use the same pawn. You may perform move actions to move around your current era. To do it, move one space in any orthogonal direction. You are not allowed to move diagonally. However, you can use your two actions to move two spaces. Each era board is surrounded on all sides by colorful walls. Bear in mind that you can't move through them. If you enter a space occupied by your opponent when moving, you will push them into the next empty space in the same direction. If there is an object in the space into which your opponent is moved, or if it is pushed against a wall, that pawn will end up squished and will be removed from the game. Place all your opponent's eliminated copies in your area. They cannot be used again during the game. If you push one of your opponent's pawn against another of their copies, you will cause a paradox. This is even more effective than squishing, since you'll remove both copies. However, if you push a copy of your opponent into one of your pawns, your opponent's copy will push your pawn as if they'd moved into that space normally. But, be careful, you can accidentally squish yourself against a wall, and this will remove one of your pieces. In addition, you should never try to directly push another of your own copies, because whenever you enter a space containing one of your pawns, you will also generate a paradox, immediately losing both copies. Instead of moving around the same board, you can take time-traveling actions to move to different eras. There are two types of time travels, traveling forward and backward, each with slightly different rules. Traveling forward is pretty simple. You just have to move a pawn from the board with your focus token to the same space in the next era. You can't travel to a space occupied by a player's pawn or object. As you progress through the four chapters of the game, you'll discover different types of objects. Traveling backward is a little bit more complicated as it generates new copies of yourself. Basically, when a copy travels to the past, it lives again all the time required to reach the present. 
To represent this temporally logical phenomenon, you will need to place a pawn from your supply in the space where the traveling action started. Keep in mind that even if you leave behind a new copy, your active copy is the one that traveled backward. As always, you should perform the remaining actions with your active copy, not the new one you've just placed. Like traveling forward, you can't travel to a space occupied by a pawn or an object. If you don't have copies left in your supply, you can't take this action. You can't use a single action to travel from the past to the future, or from the future to the past, without going through the present first. However, you can use your two actions to travel two eras, one era at a time. Other actions will be available as you reach new chapters. This will spice up your game and will force you and your opponent to devise new strategies to eliminate each other. Remember that you must perform all the actions of your turn with the same pawn. You can never split your actions between different copies of yourself, even if they are in the same era. Once you've taken all your actions, you must move your focus token to a different era. You are not allowed to keep it in the era where you currently are. At the end of this last step, always check if the winning condition is met. If your opponent has no pawns, in two eras at the end of your turn, you immediately win. At any time, a player can concede the game if they feel they have lost or there's no possible way for them to win. In addition, if neither player thinks they have a chance of winning and all signs point to a stalemate, players can call it a tie. The game has four chapters, with new rules and objects that will change your experience. Any modification of the rules that appears in them always has priority over the basic rules. Now, we will explain how the first chapter works, since it's the one you will use in your first game. If you want to discover it on your own, please stop the video. The first chapter is called Growth. It introduces seeds, shrubs, and trees, objects with which you can interact providing new actions. As one of your two actions, you can choose to plant a seed. It has to be placed in the space occupied by your active pawn or in an empty space next to it. This action will affect the future. If the same space in the next era is empty, place a shrub. If the same space in the following era of the recently placed shrub is also empty, place a tree. If there are no seeds left in the supply, you won't be able to take this action. Bear in mind that seeds can only share space with player pawns. Therefore, spaces containing a seed are considered to be occupied when placing new objects such as shrubs or trees. As an action, you can also remove a seed from the space occupied by your active pawn or an adjacent one. This action will also affect future eras. When you remove a seed, also remove the shrub in the same space in the next era. If that shrub had created a tree in the following era, remove it too, whether it is standing or not. Unlike seeds, players cannot move into a space with a shrub. However, pawns pushed against a shrub will be crushed and be immediately removed from the game. As with shrubs, a pawn cannot move into a space occupied by a tree. However, you will be able to interact with it. Trees can be pushed by players or by other objects. When a tree is pushed, it topples into the next space and becomes a fallen tree. However, if a tree topples over a space occupied by a pawn or a seed, they will be crushed and removed from the game. Trees cannot be pushed into shrubs, fallen trees, or walls. However, if a tree is pushed into another object that can be pushed, such as another tree, that object is also pushed, creating a chain. We will stop explaining the game here. There are still three chapters left, but we believe that you should discover them on your own. We'll just tell you that if you liked what you have seen so far, the rest is even more interesting. What do you think about that time you killed me? We'd love to read your comments, and remember, if you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to like it. To be up to date with our latest videos, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell. We will continue playing in our next video.